everyone, and welcome to today's event, which is part of the British Academy Summer Showcase, a free festival of ideas for curious minds. My name is Rachel Bryant Davies, and I'm a lecturer in comparative literature at Queen Mary University of London. Today, I'm joined by my research assistant, who wants to be reminded how he survived some challenges by making new friends. Today's storytelling session will feature two stories about making friends and a craft activity. So you're going to make some of these. Our ancestors told myths and legends about men, women, children and animals facing their fears and coping with challenging situations. They're very old stories, but they still have lessons to teach us today. My research explores how children in the past read fun stories and played games about ancient Greeks and Romans. Magazines have helped children in the past to learn at home and make virtual friends. So last year, I teamed up with some colleagues, Kira Vaklovic and Lucy Glasheen, and with the wonderful Storytime magazine. We made a set of six mini magazines with stories especially relevant to the challenges the pandemic has brought us. You might have seen them at school. Maybe you've heard of some of the heroes and heroines, including gods, goddesses, and brave animals, who work together to overcome challenges, including scary monsters. Today, I'm so excited to be joined by our magnificent storyteller, Wendy, who will take us on a wonderful journey through ancient worlds. Wendy is going to tell two extraordinary tales where our heroes face big challenges and we'll discover how kindness and friendship help them through. Before we get started, we have a question for you at home. Which of these myths and fables have you heard of already? You don't need to have already heard of any of them to enjoy the wonderful stories Wendy's going to tell us today, and we'll give you a link at the end to find out more. On the poll, you can select as many as you know, including other. So there's Aesop's Fables, Odysseus and the Wooden Horse, Persephone and Demeter, The Country Mouse and the City Mouse, and there's also the option to select other ancient myth or fable. So the question is, which of these myths and fables have you heard of already? Aesop's fables, Odysseus and the wooden horse, Persephone and Demeter, the city mouse and the country mouse, or another ancient myth and fable? And thank you very much for those of you who've already put some of those in. So you don't need to know anything already to enjoy the wonderful stories. This is just because the lion is curious to know. Thank you for taking part in that poll. And Wendy's now going to tell us the stories about two different lions, which are often included in collections of Aesop's fables. Although they're very old stories, we'll explore how they might help us today. Oh, and I can see that lots of you have heard of other myths and fables, and actually, looks like 42% have already heard of Aesop's fables. So the lion is very excited that you already might know about him. And our first story is about a lion who makes friends with, can you believe it, this little mouse. We can't wait to hear all about it from Wendy. Thank you, Rachel. Hello everyone, I'm so excited that you're joining us here today. I am a storyteller and I'm going to tell you two wonderful fables. Now when I tell stories, I like lots of help. So wherever you are, I want you to join in with me. I need help with some actions and maybe some sounds and together we can bring the stories to life. The first story is the lion and the mouse. Our story time has just begun. Sit back, relax and enjoy the fun. One bright, beautiful, sunny day, lion was stretched out lazily on the grass. Do you think you can stretch out lazily like a lion? Give yourself a great big morning stretch. Oh yes. He was stretching out and he was enjoying the sunshine. He loved feeling the sun on his face 
and he was becoming a little bit sleepy. Here is my lion. His eyes were just beginning to close. He was almost dozing off in the heat. Now, also nearby was a little mouse. Would you like to say hello to my little mouse? Now she was enjoying the sunshine as well. She was strolling along and going through the blades of grass and looking around and totally not noticing where she was going. And she accidentally bumped into Lion. Well, whilst Lion was stretched out and sleeping, he felt something tickling his tail. And so he twitched. Can you twitch like a lion? And then he turned and he looked around and he felt some feet pattering over his back. He turned around and saw the little mouse. And then Lion let out the biggest and loudest roar. Can you help me roar like a lion at home? One, two, three. Roar! That was very scary. It was so loud that it terrified little mouse. Lion said, who dares to disturb me? And the poor little mouse was quivering and shivering. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you, she said. But Lion, king, of the forest was furious, so angry at being disturbed. He looked very cross. Can you do a cross face like a lion? He grabbed the little mouse and said, I ought to gobble you up for disturbing me. How awful. Well, mouse turned to lion and said, please, please don't eat me. If you let me go, I might be able to repay your kindness and help you one day. Well, with that news, Lion burst out laughing. Can you laugh really loudly like a lion? Give it a go. Oh! <laughs> lion laughed so loudly, he couldn't believe that tiny little mouse was offering to help a great big lion like him. Well, little mouse, said the lion, because you have made me laugh so much today, I am going to set you free. Wasn't that kind of lion? And so he put down his paws and little mouse, she scampered away. She didn't wait at all. She escaped. Wasn't that lion very kind to do that? Well, a few days later, Lion was taking a stroll in the sunshine, enjoying listening to the birds in the trees and watching the beautiful butterflies fluttering all around him. He was having so much fun that he wasn't looking where he was going. Lion didn't know that early that morning, Two hunters had been out laying traps on the ground. They were trying to catch Lion. Well, there was Lion strolling through the forest when suddenly he stepped onto one of the traps <gasps> and a net fell down on top of him. Poor Lion was captured in a net and he wriggled and he twisted. He was desperate to get free, but he just couldn't. The more he wriggled, the more he twisted, the more he turned, the tighter the net pulled. Lion then let out the most terrific loud lion roar. Do you think you could roar loudly like a lion again? Are you ready? One, two, three. Roar! Lion's roar 
filled the skies. It rumbled and tumbled all the way through the forest. It shuddered on the ground and it reached the little mouse's ears. Mouse was playing in the forest and she heard that roar. I know that sound, she said to herself. That sounds like lion and I think he must be in trouble. And so instead of staying where she was, she scampered all the way through to the forest, following the sound of the terrible lion roar. And when she got to lion, she found him trapped inside his net. Don't worry, lion, she said. I can help you just like I promised. And so Mouse looked at the rope that was tied around him and she began to nibble with her mice teeth. Her mouse teeth, can you nibble like a mouse? Give it a go, here we go. Oh, she needs a bit more help. Can you give it a bit more of a go? She nibbled and she nibbled and she nibbled. Oh, there was a, a little bit of a hole there. Oh, this was really hard work, but she was trying as much as she could. And eventually the net broke free. The hole was big enough for Lion to escape. Lion was so thankful. He gave his biggest and brightest lion smile. Do you think you can give your biggest and brightest smile? Oh yes, he was very, very happy. Thank you, Mouse. You were right. You could help me. And from that day on, they became the best of friends. Mouse and Lion. Imagine that, a tiny mouse and a strong, fierce lion. They became friends. Now, I often think to myself, I love that story because two people became best of friends. Two animals that might not have been friends. I wonder, did you think that the lion was very kind? I thought he was very kind. And I thought the mouse was extremely brave. I bet you've done some very kind things yourself sometimes. Well, our story time has come to an end. The story is now done. But don't go away because there's still more to come. Thank you so much, Wendy. We enjoyed that story a lot here. Now we have another question for all of you watching at home. When the lion was in the net, so before he got rescued, how do you think the lion felt? So he's stuck in this net here and the mouse is trying to nibble through. Do you think, and there's a poll coming up, do you think he feels scared or frustrated or hungry? Or do you think he feels grateful? And you can also choose to say he feels all of the above. So there's a poll in the chat for you. And the question again is how do you think the lion feels when he's stuck in the net just before he gets freed, when the mouse is trying to nibble through the net? Do you think the lion is feeling scared, frustrated, hungry, grateful, or all of the above at once? So thank you, those of you who've already been filling that in. Still a chance to put your opinion of how you think the lion feels. This is when he's still got this nasty net over his face and he's stuck in it. So we think at this point, he's feeling all of those things. He's feeling scared by the net, frustrated because he's a big lion and he can't get out by himself. And he's probably hungry and wishing he could eat the mouse, but he's also very grateful that the mouse is going to get him free and then they can be friends. Ah, oh, and there's lots of great answers to that poll. So thank you very much everyone for taking part in that. Isn't it amazing how we heard that story that this little tiny mouse, even though he's scared of being eaten up, could rescue this huge lion. And this story reminds us it's good to ask if people are okay and also to offer help, even if you don't think they need it. It's also good to be willing to accept help 
and to be open to making new friends. So now it's time to make our origami lions and mice using some paper so that you can act out the story for yourselves. And you're going to watch some instructions on how to make a mouse and a lion. We're going to make some origami mice. You don't need to have any special paper. This is printer paper and this is lined paper. They don't need to be um, a particular size. It will work uh, with most sizes of paper. Um, and here are some that I already made, so you can see roughly what your mouse is going to end up looking like. So you just need a square. If you don't have a square, you'll need to ask a grown-up to help you to get a square piece of paper. We're going to turn the square into a triangle. So take the corner that's nearest to you and fold it across onto the opposite corner. Get the points to match, hold it down with a finger and bring your other hand back and flatten out that edge into a nice sharp crease. Then we need to have the pointy bit facing us and we're going to take the right hand edge of this triangle and keep the folded edges on top of each other and bring it across to the other corner. And we're not folding it in half, we're going to stop about two fingers from the other point and bring it to about there. doesn't matter exactly and fold up onto that edge there. So you've got a small triangle which is folded across almost but not quite to the edge of the other one, about two fingers away. The bigger triangle underneath is going to be the nose of the mouse, like this bit, and this bit on top, the smaller triangle, is going to fold up and be the ear. Now you could have it quite a flat ear. I'm going to make a pointing listening ear, so it's going to be a bit of a taller ear like that. When you're happy with the angle of your ear, then flatten that crease down. So here's the nose and this is the ear of your mouse. Now we've got this point of the triangle still left here and we're going to fold it underneath so it's flat, uh, like a collar or a neck of the mouse. So I'm going to turn my mouse over and keeping this folded edge together, bring this pointy bit up and fold it over like that and that will give a flat line underneath um, the bottom of the mouse. I'm going to use a pen to give my mouse a face. So here is going to be a black nose and you could use crayons or felt tips. Uh, you could use lots of nice colours to decorate your mouse. I'm going to give my mouse some whiskers, maybe another whisker and an eye. Uh, you can see on some of them I drew some <laughs> mouth, a mouth and uh, teeth and an ear as well. So have fun decorating your mouse. Now we're going to make a lion to go with our mouse. Um, again, it doesn't matter what sort of paper you use, it works well in any sort and then you can decorate afterwards. Um, but here are some that I made earlier. So again, we're going to start by making a triangle out of our square piece of paper. So taking one corner that's nearest to you and folding it across to the opposite corner, holding it down with your fingers and then bringing your other hand uh, back to make the crease a sharp crease. And then when you can open that up, you can see your nice clean fold there. So bringing it round so the fold is pointing to and away from you, and we're going to bring up the other corner that's near to you and match those folds together so they're on top of each other. And again, match the corners, hold it down, and then use your hand to make a fold. So we now have a cross shape fold in the middle of the paper, you can see there, and that's going to help us to make the ears and the nose of the lion. So we want to fold up a little bit of a corner to make the nose. I'm going to use the corner nearest to me and fold it halfway to the middle of the paper that's marked with that cross. And then I'm going to make a sharp fold so that his nose stays fairly flat. And then we're going to take the side corners in to make the ears, which will be like this. So we're aiming for about a finger um, to the side and above the cross that's already here. So taking in a corner and aiming for about a finger away from the middle of the paper, uh, not too close to the middle. 
and where you're, when you're happy make a sharp fold again and then the other side, the other ear can be made to match. Um, so again heading for above the middle fold and to the side of the uh, vertical middle fold and then you've got your nose and your ears folded in and then we're going to flip that over so you have the nice side of the page without having the folds showing and spin it around so that the pointy end is towards you and the flat end is away from you. Now this pointy end is going to be the mane of the lion and you can see those here I've drawn some fur on and this flat bit is going to be the chin of the lion. So we're going to fold the chin towards you and you want the corners uh, so the corners of the triangle here and they're going to match up to the corners of the main triangle roughly. So if you bring it too far down you won't get a main going all the way round and if it's too far up your main will be too big. So try to match the corners of the ears to the corners of the main and when you're happy then fold down the paper make a sharp crease again and you can see that now you've got a lion. So I'm going to decorate my lion and give him a face. I'm going to draw a little nose and a smile on my lion and I'm going to put some whiskers on my lion. and some eyes on my lion. You can use crayons and felt tips. I'm sure there's going to be lots of really beautiful, colourful lions. And I might also draw in some fur on the mane. I find that's easier if I lift up the chin so I don't accidentally draw on the chin. And then I can fold that down again. And I have another lion to join my pride of lions. And the lions can now act out the story with the mouse that we just made. So there's a lion and a mouse just like in our story. So I hope you had fun making your mouse and lion. You can find the origami lion and mouse instructions in our activity pack which was put together by our fantastic project partners Storytime magazine. There's also drawing and colouring ideas, a word search, and plenty more activities to explore. And now it's time for our next story from Wendy. This one is about the time that the lion, a full-size one who looked really scary, and a person made friends by helping each other through difficult challenges. Thank you, Rachel. Welcome back, everyone. Our story time has just begun. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the fun. This time, I'm going to tell you the story of Androcles and the lion. And remember, I need lots of help with my story. So get ready to do some actions and some sounds so that together we can bring the story to life. A long, long time ago, and just as far away in ancient Greece, a young man named Androcles lived. And at that time, many people weren't free. They were slaves, just like Androcles. And his master was very, very mean. He was always cross. Can you do a cross face for me? Oh, he was always angry and cross and was very harsh to Androcles. Well, Androcles just couldn't stand it. And one day he decided to run away. He said, I'm going to escape and run away and live in the forest. I would much rather be free with nature than here where I've got such a hard, horrible life. And so he made a plan. He waited until nighttime and then he tiptoed past his master who was asleep. Can you pretend to tiptoe as well with Androcles? He tiptoed 
very quietly so as not to wake him up. And then he moved very carefully past the walls. And as soon as he got to the door, he ran. He ran out into the street. He ran through and past all the houses and out into the forest. He was finally free. But now he didn't know what to do. Androcles just ran. He carried on running because he did not want to get caught. At that time, it was a very, very serious crime to run away if you were a slave. He was running so far and for so long, he began to get quite hungry. How do you feel when you're hungry? Can you make a hungry face? He rubbed his tummy. He looked around and he saw some berries on a bush. He thought, maybe I could eat some of these. Oh, maybe not, he thought again. They might be dangerous. What if they make me sick? So Androcles didn't eat them. He looked up and he saw a cave in the distance. It was quite cold and dark now and he needed somewhere to hide and sleep. And so he entered into the dark cave and he lay his head down to sleep. Can you lay your head down to sleep like Androcles? And he began to have a comfortable snore. Are you ready? But as he was sleeping so deeply, he suddenly heard a great, big, loud roar. And in the darkness, he saw two great, big eyes blinking at him. Can you blink like this in the dark? It was a lion. A scary angry lion and he was roaring loudly. Are you ready to do a great big lion roar? One, two, three. Well, oh, Androcles was terrified. His legs were shaking. His shoulders were shivering. How would you look if you were a bit scared and you came face to face with a great big lion in the cave? Now he should have run away. I think that's what I would do. But he suddenly noticed that the lion stopped roaring. The lion actually looked quite sad and he fell down looking really, really unhappy. Well, Androcles, being very brave and very careful, looked a little closer and noticed that the lion's paw was wounded. He was hurt. There was a thorn sticking out from his paw. Well, what would you do? Would you help the lion, do you think? Well, that's what Androcles did. He was very brave and he went up to the lion's paw and he pulled the thorn out. The lion was so happy. He gave a great big lion smile. Can you do a great big lion smile for me? As bright as you can do. Oh, he was so relieved because that thorn was giving him so much pain. Well, as soon as he'd done that, Androcles then ripped his tunic, his own shirt, to make a bandage for the lion. He gave it a little bit of a rip tore off a piece of his own clothes and made a bandage to wrap around the lion's sore paw. Wasn't that kind of him? Well, Lion was very, very grateful. Thank you, Androcles. Thank you for helping me. I was in so much pain. From that day on, Androcles and the lion became friends. They went everywhere together. They played together, they sang together. 
Oh, they were having so much fun because he was free. Well, on one morning, Androcles decided to set off by himself and go and fetch some water. He was taking a stroll in the forest and it was a bright, beautiful, sunny day. He listened to the birds tweeting in the trees. He smelt the flowers in the grass and he watched the butterflies flittering past him. He was enjoying his freedom when suddenly he heard, there, over there, escape slave. Two guards had recognized Androcles and they knew he had run away. They grabbed him, they captured him and they marched him all the way back to his master. Poor Androcles was captured again. His master was furious. You are going to be punished, he said. And Androcles was taken away to be captured and made to fight a wild animal. That was the punishment at that time. He was sitting down waiting to fight some kind of a beast and he was terrified and he was lonely. He missed his friend, the lion. He sat down listening to the roar of a beast in the arena and there were crowds all around coming to see the show. The emperor was sitting up on high on his throne and he was waiting for a great show. Androcles came out ready to fight. He had a sword, he had a shield, and he was so scared. In the distance, he heard the roar of a wild animal. This beast was let out. The people cheered, the people roared, and the lion, well, the lion stopped roaring. It came right up to Androcles and gave him a big lick on the face and nuzzled him. It was his friend, the lion. They were now back together again. They had found each other. The crowd was so surprised. Look, they called out, look how he has tamed a lion. You must set him free. He should be free. They all cheered. The emperor was so surprised. Everybody cheered for Androcles. They showered him with flowers and he was indeed set free. Now the lion and Androcles could make their way and play and hang out together without worrying about being captured ever again. And that is where we shall leave Androcles and the lion for today. But I wonder if you could have a think about how brilliant it was that they became friends and how happy Androcles was to see him again. I bet you're just as happy like that when you see your friends after a while. Our story time has now done. That is the end of today's fun. Bye-bye. Thank you, Wendy, for another fantastic story. And thank you for helping us to think about our friends. So we have another question for all of you watching. You'll notice that Lion has got a bandage on his paw from where this nasty thorn was taken out. How do you think he felt at the end when he saw his friend again and he didn't eat Androcles? So there's a question coming up for you again and you can say whether you think he was surprised to see his friend or happy he could save his friend or hungry but he remembered to be kind or whether you think all of the above. So a reminder, the question that's coming up for you is how do you think the lion in this story felt at the end 
when he saw Androcles again in the arena and he didn't eat Androcles. Do you think he's surprised to see his friend, happy he could save his friend, or hungry but remembered to be kind, or all of the above? So you can put your answer to that into the poll that will come up on the screen for you. And thank you very much for participating in that. So we think the lion says he was quite hungry, but he was definitely surprised. He didn't think he would ever see his friend again when he got caught. And he was really happy to see his friend again and even to save him in return for the bandage and the thorn being taken out by Androcles. So what I love about this story is that both the lion and Androcles help each other. And it would have been so surprising, like Wendy showed, for people to see them celebrate being friends instead of fighting. Isn't it amazing that the stories Wendy's told us today have shown that you can choose to be kind and you might make friends when you're least expecting it? So thank you for people who participated in the poll. We've got some quite split answers there, but I think we all agree he wasn't that hungry. So thank you for taking part in that. And sadly, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us at home and to our wonderful storyteller, Wendy. And maybe you can all clap a thank you to Wendy with the lion. Remember, you can find more from the We Are Heroes series which are six mini magazines made with the amazing people at Storytime magazine, plus the resource pack with extra activities from today's stories using the link that's coming up on the screen for you at home. So goodbye everyone. <laughs>